Hello, welcome to the UCAF Introduction to Large Print for TechShare Pro 2020. My name is David Scott. I'm MD at Vision Support Trading Limited, a UK based transcription supplier. I'm also a board member of UCAF and the board lead for Large Print. So here's briefly what we want to cover uh, in this introduction to large print. Firstly, what is large print? What do we mean by large print? It might seem obvious, but it isn't necessarily quite as obvious as it seems. Um, what are the large print standards and particularly what are the minimum standards recommended by UCAF? We look at some resources for learning in more detail about large print. Um, a brief look at technology for producing large print and its evolution and then we'll look at some examples of large print provision for very different applications then summarize all that before looking at how you can take the next steps with large print i should stress uh, that what this uh, introduction looks at is very much hard copy large print as a large print document in their hand. It isn't looking at electronic documents that you might be sent, which uh, you could use with screen readers and perhaps or even manipulate the text yourself. But we do have other resources available through UCAF if that's what you're interested in. So first of all, what is large print? Um, the term large print can be a bit of an oversimplification. Um, clear print or modified large print are also terms often used in the industry that you might hear. Now, anyone with a visual, cognitive or physical impairment that hinders the ability to read hard copy print may require that print in an accessible format. So. I think the critical thing to note is that simply raising the font size to, for example, 16, 18 or 20 point is only part of the answer. Um, otherwise, we would just simply recommend blowing documents up from A4 to A3. Vision impairment is not just about short sightedness. Um, so uh, there are various other more complicated um, vision impairments such as macular degeneration, tunnel vision, that sort of thing, where you do really need to simplify the layout. So text and layout must also be clear, which uh, may require the document to be modified. So hence the term clear print or modified large print. Large print standards. Um, unlike some accessible format areas such as PDF or Braille, there are really no international rec internationally recognised bodies defining large print standards. Organisations like ourselves therefore tend to produce guidance rather than standards. And this presentation is based on the UCAF guidance G003, creating clear print and large print documents. Now, this was revised and simplified in 2019 following the, the creation of specific guidance and a number of other areas such as accessible images. So the document itself is quite long, G003, uh, over 30 pages. Um, and uh, we will live, give you a link to that on the UCAF website later. But very briefly, it does provide some bullet points on the key uh, suggestions. So minimum text size 16 point or ideally 18. Try to use a legible sans serif typeface such as Calibri or Arial rather than a serif font such as Times New Roman. Try and provide good contrast between the text and the background. So no text overlapping images, non-glossy paper, sufficient weight to avoid any show through of print from the other side. So we tend to recommend ideally uh, black text on a white background. No information conveyed solely through color 
images or diagrams. If possible, no italics, the lining or large blocks of capital letters. Page numbers, labels, superscripts, etc., should ideally be in the same font size as the main text. Single line spacing, left aligned. Horizontal text, ideally one blank line between paragraphs at the same point size as the text. Words and single pieces of information, ideally not split onto two lines wherever possible. Columns avoided or reduced in number. If columns are used, there is space between them and possibly a vertical di dividing line. And the guidance does give you a bit more information that we haven't got time to look at here as to why those things are uh, necessary for some people with vision impairment. It would also be well worth your while to have a look at uh, vision awareness training to understand a little bit more about that. But making basically making print clear is much more than just increasing the font size and in some cases may have to be tailored to the individual user. So if you want to find out more detail about this, uh, you can have I've got some resources uh, which you can find on our website www.ucaf.org forward slash standards. Uh, particularly GW03, Creating Clear and Large Print Documents from 2019. It's also worth looking at G021, Large Print, Making Images and Diagrams Accessible, again revised in 2019. A brief look at uh, technology for producing large print. Um, the user only really cares that he's got his document in large print. He doesn't really care how you get there. Um, but it's worth understanding over the years, there's been a number of technologies have been employed to transcribe documents into clear and large print. So in the very beginning, we might have looked at copy typing. Uh, this is literally typing the whole document out again. Um, this is obviously time consuming. It's also expensive, therefore, and it's also prone to human error. Um, when a lot of for documents where there's a lot of you're doing multiple copies and there's a lot of similar text, template typing is often employed. Um, this saves a lot of time, but again, you've got to potential for human error. You've also got to make sure that the uh, the standard text that you might be having in the template, such as terms and conditions, haven't changed. Um, scanning is uh, and optical character recognition um, is a technology that people have used when a hard copy of the original is available. Um, scanning the text in, extracting it by using optical character recognition. Obviously, this is a lot quicker and um, a lot quicker than and cheaper than someone typing the whole document in again. Um, it does have some drawbacks, optical character recognition. Uh, you avoid human error, but it does have its own errors. So the classic being recognizing the difference, for example, between a one, a lowercase l or a capital I. Um, so again, not perfect. If you can get the original document in a PDF, uh, as it's uh, an extractable PDF rather than just an image PDF, it should be possible to extract the exact text from it without those problems of optical character recognition. There are some other drawbacks, um, but in theory, you should be able to then reformat the text into the exact text into the font size, etc., that you need for your user. Um, and we have another presentation in this series on PDF, and it's worth looking at that because PDF UA even allows you to make sure that the text is extracted in the right order and reconfigured in the right order. 
And then finally, there's things like direct data feeds. Now, um, all of these uh, remain legitimate approaches depending on how you receive the source document and the volumes involved. You may get a hard copy rather than a PDF. It may not be worth setting up um, an automated process if you're doing something one off. So a couple of examples to illustrate that uh, are worth looking at. Um, so example one, um, you're providing or transcribing course material for a vision impaired university student. The source material may or may not be easy to extract the text from. You may only have a hard copy textbook, for example. You may have written notes from uh, a lecturer. Um, it's also likely to be a one off requirement, which is going to reduce the potential for automation. But however, if it is a one off requirement, then the font size, uh, et cetera, can be tailored to that individual user. And this is a good illustration of why we tend to talk about this as a as guidance rather than standards. If your user, if you're doing this kind of work and your user wants 20 point font or 24 point font, give them that rather than be wedded to whatever it says in the UCAF uh, guidance. Now at the other extreme, another example here, you might be transcribing several hundred statements a day for a bank's vision impaired customers and having to, to, to uh, uh, turn that work around within 24 hours. So the source material is much more likely to be easy to extract the text from. You may be getting PDF. Um, so there should be significant potential for automation. But on the other hand, you may you don't know the individual users. They're all different. You may have to settle on a standardized font size, etc. So basically, you need to decide in that case. Summary, the, the key points to note regarding clear and large print. Um, making hard copy documents accessible is not just about increasing the size of the font. There are no hard and fast standards, only guidance. So suppliers should try to meet the needs of the individual users and where that's not possible, provide something acceptable to as many users as reasonably possible. Technological developments have allowed us to improve both the accuracy and lead time when transcribing documents to accessible format. So it's worth thinking about what the best way to do it is in your case. So finally, uh, just some next steps. Um, if you want to find out more about large print or getting started in it, uh, we've given the web address there for our standards and guidance, www.ucaf.org forward, stand, uh, forward slash standards. If you're looking for somebody to help you with transcription, uh, UCAF have a members page, I've given the web address there, www.ucaf.org forward slash membership, forward slash sponsoring members. And finally, if you have any questions about this, um, please feel free to email us at inquiries at ucaf.org. So thank you for listening and I hope that that's provided some guidance as to how to get started with large print documents.